Welcome to the only daily podcast focusing on compliance news of the day. Each morning, start your day with a cup of coffee and Tom Fox, the voice of compliance, to hear about four of the top compliance, corruption, or leadership stories you will need to start your day. The Daily Compliance News is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network. September 15, 2020. The Volkswagen Monitorship is Over edition. And we begin with that story from the New York Times. The uh, corporate monitor, Larry Thompson, has reported that Volkswagen uh, completed its corporate equivalent of probation after uh, Thompson noted that the company has fulfilled conditions of a 2017 plea agreement stemming from the use of illegal software to evade regulations. The final report um, noted the German automaker has adopted measures w- will make it easier for employees to report wrongdoing. It is a major milestone for the company and one that hopefully will get it past the uh, huge scandal that engulfed it. The uh, CEO of the company, Her- Herbert Dice, said this is the starting point and the company will need to be vigilant. Thompson himself said that while he could not guarantee there would be no other scandals at Volkswagen, he did note Volkswagen is such a large and complex organization. What I can certify is that if another problem comes up, it will be handled much differently. In an interesting article from the Wall Street Journal, it appears that Michael Corbett uh, leaving Citigroup was uh, actually a push from regulators uh, because the um, company's lax, or the bank's rather lax, risk management systems. It has failed to improve these, and uh, the latest indicia was the uh, $900 million to a creditor of Revlon. So it's an interesting twist on the um, latest um, uh, change at the head of Citigroup. So um, apparently the regulators had been on Citi for quite some time, and Citi had not simply uh, invested in the controls. Next up, we have a couple of articles from the FT, the always great uh, on management column by Andrew Hill. And he talks about a remote staff must build a new corporate culture and really goes into that at this inflection point in time, there is going to be a new corporate culture. If you can't get together, obviously, at the office anymore, um, something new is going to happen. While uh, Zoom, Slack and other tools can be used, it is not uh, clear what that new culture will be, that there can be new relationships, there can be a variety of changes that are not anticipated. So um, this is where compliance has a really big role to play because you have to, of course, work as hard as you can to keep a corporate culture. The uh, areas where companies tend to get in trouble are on the margins, and although you may have more trouble monitoring those margins, uh, you need to remain ever vigilant. And finally, Rio Tinto is scrambling to uh, rebuild its reputation after the company literally up to the top, uh, see former CEO Jean-Sebastien Jacques uh, <clears throat> uh, approved the destruction of an ancient Aboriginal site um, to expand a mine. Um, the company uh, has uh, some really difficult times uh, times ahead to try to um, re-establish uh, relations with local communities. It's become clear the issue of individual accountability is hindering the start of the rebuilding tr- process. So a lot of work uh, to rebuild the culture of Rio Tinto after uh, this self-inflicted disaster. The Daily Compliance News is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network and a proud member of C-Suite Radio. Thanks so much for listening. I hope you'll join me again tomorrow.